Hello, VOD people. Let's see. Yep. That's working right. There we go. Okay. So, what are we building here? Uh, we're building an uh, app with the Svelte Kit. The it's basically the Nuxt or Next Nuxt.js or Next.js just for Svelte. And what we're building is a app for it's it's a virtual game board for the aerial combat rules published for D and D fifth edition in the third issue of Arcadia, which is MCDM's monthly magazine available on their Patreon or their online shop as a PDF. Right. <laughs> That's the introduction. It's getting more and more succinct for every time. Let's see. So what we got working so far is that we have different actors on the board. Ignore the stunt phase thing at the bottom at the for the moment. You can click and drag. It behaves a bit strange, a bit strange when you do that, but sure. Here we go. So we can move these around. So these are the different altitudes which the actors can be present. This is a turn tracker or combat tracker. So you can click move to next turn, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. And this add actor button lets you add an actor. Now. Nothing of the not none of this is properly styled yet. So this is mostly to get things working. And I've had a few iterations on, or I've gone over. How should I put it? <laughs> how should I put it? Um, I've had a few iterations on how to approach this. So the first couple of times, I wanted to automate everything from the beginning but my new strategy is just make like a virtual board almost like a analog tabletop board so like for like a regular board game just make that just virtual and make that work so no automatic calculations no uh, adhering to the rules or anything just make something that does exactly what you need to do if you want to run th this kind of encounter and that is basically just to make it easier um, to um, to get something off the ground, to get like an MVP, a minimum viable product, just so that I have something that I can publish. And if I want to come back to this project and update it with more automation, I can do that later. Uh, so my, my current goal is just to get this working and being able to um, uh, get this working and being able to share this with the world at some point. Just to get cr across the finish line, basically. To start something and then finish it. That's my, that's my goal. Anyway, let's get to programming. So the next thing that we want to do, let's, let me just have a quick look in the good old Git repository. Yep. Everything's committed, so do, 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 do. Ansible for adding actors is my last commit. So that's this thing. So that so that works nicely, um, which can be proven by adding a I don't know, uh, Ara. Oh crap, uh, Ara Kokra, Kokra. <laughs> I'm not sure how it's spelled. Uh, let's just go with this for spelling. <laughs> Uh, we can select some of these. Uh, these would be determined by uh, by the rules, but we're not gonna bother with that now for now. So just add this actor, and it shows up here, and it shows up here. We should probably. Um, let them add, let me think, uh, 
I'm thinking, how do you decide your opening altitude again? That's by rolling initiative, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, as a DM setting up this combat, you want to add the name of the actor and the flight modifier. Then you want to add the altitude and initiative later. Uh, let's just leave it like this for now, and then we'll come, uh, we'll circle back to it later when we actually want to make it a bit more useful. So, the next thing, what is the next thing to add? Uh, I think I want to. Um, I think I want, might want to just add like a. Hmm. So I'm 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 kind of debating whether or not. Uh, I should have like the stunt dice, which is something you do on your turn in the area combat. You roll stunt dice. And I'm not really sure if I should have like the stunt dice be a thing you do inside of the app or not. Or if it just should just be like moving stuff around for now. Okay, we need a reset button anyways. That's something we do need. <clears throat> so let's actually implement that correctly. So we do have a reset button for now. Uh, but it's implemented rather simply. So let's have a look at the current implementation, which is inside of index. Oh, right. We actually have a lot of unused imports here. Do we need any of these? Altitude, actor... We'll just keep them around for now. Well, the D zone, we don't, we won't be needing that. So we'll just quickly amend the previous commit to include that removal. There we go. Problemo solved. Reset. Oh, nice. It's actually just a function on the encounter state already. Ooh, that is quite nice. Okay. That I like. I feel like the encounter should pro the encounter state should probably know whose turn it is too. Yeah. So these function the the um, current actor and this one. Yeah, these should probably all be functions on the encounter state actually. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that. So, we're going to Okay, let's go to this state thing first. Encounter, oop, encounter state. Yes. Uh where here we go. So, when we're exporting stuff, we uh, or rather, when we're adding functions to this, or uh, yeah, we add them. Um, we have to update the encounter set like this, right? So let's have a look. Uh, we do have reset. Uh, we should probably hmm. That's that's an internal state. That's. <laughs> Okay. So the first thing we need is actually to start storing the current turn actor ID. Uh, but how do I... Right, because... Oop, that's not what I want to do. Right, because what I actually do is return the encounter state... And the encounter state is defined up here, right? So current current actor ID. 
uh, which is a string, yes. No, it's always a string, yeah. <clears throat> That's gonna, yep. So current actor ID is gonna be empty, like so. And then we're gonna get, get down. And we add an actor, right? Uh, so current actors push. Yep. Okay. So if current actors dot length is one, which means that we just added the first actor. We also want to set that first actor as the first. Do we though? No, we don't actually, because we want to kind of explicitly start the combat. So let's not do that. So that uh, adds support for th setting the current actor thingy, which means we can implement move to next turn, which is fun. So let's do that. Let's go over here, go back here. Uh, let's above reset, but at below uh, update actor, move. Mm. Move to next actor. I think this is right. Okay. So we're going to update encounter state. This is the current encounter state. Uh, so we don't need to do this. Actually, oh, uh, yep. That's just the current one. So we get the previous actor and the rest when the rest. So yep. Uh, this is going to be, uh, let's see, how many of these do we have? A couple of current. And then we're going to find the, the current actor ID. Okay. Not move. Uh, uh, I actually want to say advance, which is more specific yeah so this is the same as before we get the actors that are current we get the we store the first actor as the previous actor we get the rest of the actors in the rest variable we iterate over the rest of the actors in rest and if the previous actor is the same as the current actor the current actor what what hmm if the previous actor's id is the same as the yeah so if the previous actor id is the same as the current actor id right then set the current Set so the 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 actor that we're at now as the current actor ID in return. If not, set the previous actor as the actor that we're at. Yeah. Okay. 
So it iterates and always checks if the previous one that I saw, if that's the current actor, set the current one, set, set this actor as a current one. Well, that was confusing. And if we reach this state, then we just set the first actor as the current actor because um, we would return if we didn't do that. Okay. What if we try to advance before there are any actors? Uh, we would not iterate. We would get here and get into trouble. So if this is not set, just return an empty string, which puts us back at where we were. Yeah. Uh, then the last the last thing we do is return cur. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, sure, we can do that. Uh, we no, no, we don't want to break actually. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so why are we planning here? Uh, this looks right to me, but apparently it isn't. Can it find right name reset? Okay, I wouldn't expect you to find the name reset. Should I do something like this maybe? Whoa, no, 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 no. Wait, that works? Wait, what? Oh, right, for the update. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot myself. Right, that makes, <laughs> that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Ooh, actually, not to next actor. Advanced turn, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, there we go. Advanced turn. Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm not thinking that we maybe should uh, just expose the get current actor too. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, get current actor. And uh, this basically just grabs encounter state and goes to actors. No, right, okay, I need to actually, uh, what's the one? Get, no, what's the, um... can I just access the current value of some way? I think I can. Uh, let's uh, let's have a look in the documentation over here. Oop, that's not the documentation that we want. This is the one. Svelte store. Writable update, set update, set stop, readable, derived, get. This is the one. General, you should read the value of a store by subscribing to it and using the value as it changes over time. Occasionally, you may need to retrieve the value of store to which you're not subscribed. Get allows you to do so. Just import get from Svelte store, right? So that's fine. Uh, we can do this, get from, yep. So get this one, get the actors. And find the first one, first actor, in which the actor dot ID is equal to the encounter state dot current actor ID. Like so. Yarp derp. So if we go back here. We don't need this, because this is the same. Yep, this is the same. Um, we don't need this. This 
So we're going to do encounter state current actor ID and get the same thing. Uh, we don't need move to next turn, so let's just delete that. I don't actually need this handle consider either. Let me see if we can just extract that and commit just that change. Yeah, here we go. No, I just want these changes. Uh, and this line. Just each of those lines and amend those into the previous commit. There we go. Okay, so now we don't have get current actor, but we do have encounter state get current actor. We don't have this, but we have encounter state of get current actor. We don't have move to next turn, but we do have encounter state advance turn, like so. This is complaining for some reason. Void function return value is used. Uh, right, so if we do this instead, it should probably be fine. Uh, let's see, yeah. So let's save that and see if that works out. Uh, so this should, in theory, it still works. Awesome sauce. Well, this is excellent, haha, <laughs> okay. So let's just commit this because we like to have smaller commits which are manageable. So move, turn, logic to encounter, encounter, state. Uh, yeah. Excellent, that was easy. Uh, so that's moved over there. Uh, the reset thing though, right. Did we remove the, no, we didn't. Okay, because that already uses the right one. <clears throat> okay, so that's good. Um, so we should probably have the I kind of have a vision of how I want the turn counter or turn tracker to work. And I'm debating whether or not just to do that now. Now that I've got it kind of working. Yeah, I think I am. Okay. Let's just let's just do it. Why not? This is not a very structured uh, process by any mean, by any means. So component, uh, let's see, turn, you can't see any of this because uh, the recording isn't showing any of the in-app dialogues. Uh, turn tracker. Sure, let's go with that. Here we go. This is the turn tracker, script, lang, ts. Uh, it's probably just going to import like encounter state. Let's just start over with that at the beginning. And I have like a vision where, let's see, we've got the, a section, uh, which is styled in a certain way. So let's go section. It should display as flex. There should be justify content space, but be space between, like so. And inside of that section, there should be like a div, maybe, yeah. And this should show the current actor. Maybe we should just say that straight out. Okay, text, keep, uh, turn tracker current actor All right so if you add it into strings we can do uh, let's do these alphabetically turn
return tracker current actor uh, yeah let's just do it like that and after that we're just going to put in the get a web well encounter state get current actor dot name And if we don't get one, we'll just default to an empty string. That's nice. Okay. Let's just see if we can just drop this into index. Let's move it down a bit. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the turn tracker thingy. Let's just put it at the top. Yeah. So right here, turn tracker. How was that imported? Turn tracker from lib components from, yep. Apparently the, the uh, some some update to the Svelte plugin for WebStorm or in the IntelliJ platform in general added support for these new imports for Svelte, Svelte kit. So it automatically recognizes that $lib means the lib directory inside of the source. So you don't have to navigate. If you have a like a uh, very, um, very deep hierarchy of components or directories or everything uh, or something, you don't have to navigate all the way up and then back down again. You can just go from lib and then move down. It's good. It's quite good. Okay, so it's been imported. Does it work? Current actor is Amy. That is correct. And if I do this, it does not update. <laughs> oh, right. That kind of makes sense. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, but that's fine. That's easy to fix. We are using Svelte after all. So we can just say uh, dollar current actor equals Encounter state dot current no oh, um, might actually just be easier to do a do, mm, I don't want to do a subscribe though. But I kind of want to know whenever it changes. I want it to be set. So I do know. Yeah, th this is interesting. Actually, we want to add something new. We want a get actor, I think. Yeah, that's probably what we actually want. <clears throat> let's see. So right here, let's just go right here and paste that in here. And not just current, but we want the, well, a actor. Let's pass an ID of string. And we get the ground with all this, all these things, but here we use the ID as passed in. Yeah. Move that up into one line. And we can actually simplify this by doing. Can we do self referential stuff? I don't think we can. But do we actually need, um, let's see, get current actor, right? Actor ID. Wow, why don't we just pass the, what? Why don't we just do like this?
um, actor, actor ID, current actor ID. Doesn't that do the same thing though? How did I define it again? Current actor ID, yeah. So this should work instead. This is probably complaining, complaining, and resolved, yeah. That's fine. We know what it is. And this is just checking if there is a current actor at all. Yeah. So, this is basically just the same check. Current actor ID. Like so, yeah. That's fine. Okay, so we've got those to nail down. That means we should probably be able to remove this. Are there any of the usages? Oh, yes, apparently you're over here. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> this. <laughs> Right, uh, let's see. Uh, current actor is in counter state. Get, no, yes. Hmm. Yeah, get actor and the string should be in counter state dot current actor ID. Like so. Which means that this could be changed for current actor, like so. If we now head back to state over here, we can see that this is no longer being used. We can save, and this actually works now. How about that? Woohoo! Very good work. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next part, which is adding a button. So we want to add one of these. Uh, yeah, that one. Uh, yeah, let's just make it a normal one. And we'll just do this, I think. Add some text. The key is turn tracker dot advance. Oh, advance turn. Heading back into the strings thing, we can do advance turn. It just says, oh, nope, it says advance turn, like so. And whenever we click this on click, we should grab the encounter, okay, rather, we should make it like this, and say encounter state, advanced turn, like so. Uh, let's do align item center. Well, actually, let's do baseline instead. Might not make a difference, but it looks a bit nicer. Yay, that works too. Okay. Uh, so that's good. So the next thing that I kind of want to do, so you can advance the turn like this, which is nice, but you kind of want to see the whole roster of, of people. So what I'm thinking is, should be able to click over here. So basically the div. So let's actually give this a class of container, just in case, okay, container. And we're gonna name this one No, because then, yeah, well, they are scoped. Let's just do, oh, not that, but this. Oh, oh, oh these are not things I want to do. There we go. Uh, this should probably be like uh, the, um, oh, what's this then? Uh, 
Uh, this is the uh, name display. I don't know. This is not a very good word for it, but sure. Let's go with that. Name display. And the pointer, no, no, no. The cursor is going to be a pointer, yes. So we hover this now. It should be clickable, like, look clickable like this. Um, and what we want to do is have like a almost like a pop up, I think. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> uh, let me see. Um, let's just grab the turn tracker from here. So, paste that in here. Uh, let's call this list. Uh, we can we need turn order. Yeah, so we used once. That's nice. That means we can just grab that. Wholesale. Uh, that grabs just the name. Yeah, good. Um, and we will set the turn list. To display none as the default well, let's see actually we're not gonna do by by here we're gonna do uh, let's Let's make like a class just inside of here that we call collapse, which just says to play display to none. And then we have a let show turn list, I guess, which is false by default. And then when you click the Name display thingy on click. Uh, we just change it. So show turn list becomes not show turn list. So that toggles it, I guess. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. And do 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 do. This should have a class when should have have the class collapsed when not show turn list yes let's see how that works out okay that doesn't look too promising okay <laughs> oh no 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 it's supposed to be collapse hmm I actually wanted to be collapsed. There we go. So if I click this, oh my God, it's almost like magic. <laughs> <coughs> okay, good. Um, So add compact turn tracker. Uh, 
Tag turn tracker while allowing um, complete list of actors in turn order. There we go. Next thing, add a reset button, I think. So we're going to have to go to layout, which contains our nav where we've got our add actor button. And we're basically just gonna have like the reset button. So we just head down to the reset button, which is located right here. Let's just copy that, paste that in, unclick, just do like, oop. Uh, we can just do like, uh, oop. We need to import encounter state, which we can do by copying this, like so. Uh, encounter, counter state dot reset, like so. Should there be a confirmation? Yeah, probably. Are we gonna do it? No, not now. Let's save, and it should add an, another button. Or ideally it would. Let's see, does the compiler say anything? Nope, that says everything is fine. Oh, wait a second. Uh, nope. Oh, there we go. Uh, right, so those are a bit compact. Let's go back here. Let's go to the nav thingamajig. Let's add a gap of 0.5 run maybe. That's probably fine. Uh, let's see, it shouldn't say reset anymore. We should actually add something more meaningful in here. Uh, nav reset. Yeah. Let's go into strings. Reset. Should just say reset. There we go. Uh, yeah. I don't know that one. Um, um, add reset button to nav. And then the next thing what we're going to do is head over here. We're going to Remove these buttons, like so. That's good, yeah. That's a mo lot more compact than what we had. And if you wanna see the whole thing, you can just click here. Is this pretty? No. Am I a designer capable of making this pretty? Not really. Uh, <laughs> st still gonna give it a try at some point though, but not just, not right now. Now I just want to want things to work. So let's actually clean this up a bit. Code wise. Wow, this is a lot of stuff that's going out. This is quite nice. Is so this whole add actor thing can just be scrapped. Wow, that is a lot of stuff going out. Yeah, that's that's really nice actually. So we can still advance turns. Um, everything else should work as expected. We're not actually doing much with those things. Okay. Remove temporary buttons. As as if these aren't temporary. Um The next thing I think the, I think we're gonna do is oh crap I just had it on the tip of my tongue uh, yeah 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 so this whole thingamajig of the um, altitude layers that should be its own component so let's do that next what should we call this monstrosity of a thing. <clears throat> The arena. The f 
field. Naming things, it's difficult. Maybe we should just call it arena. I can't think of anything else. Combat arena? <laughs> sure, why not? Combat arena. That's the name for it now. Script, lang, ts. Um, gonna need me some of oh, that sweet, sweet encounter state. Um, let's have a looky looky. Doo, 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 doo. So, what we're gonna render is basically just this, but we want we also want to know all of this, which we paste here. Uh, there are, oh, right, and you also need this. So we've got the arena, and then we got the layers separately. Yeah, because we're using arena multiple times. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. So, Yeah, I'm just thinking. So once we've got the arena set up, you know what? Let's just leave that as is for now, and we'll come back to it later, if necessary. So instead of this here, we're just gonna import the arena instead. Come at arena, I mean, like so. We don't need this. Save, see if that works. Looks like it. Can we still drag and drop as we did before? Yes, we can. Very cool. Very cool indeed. Um, let's see. Is this the one? 0.5 rem. Uh, nope. This is the one. Gap. 0.5 run. Yay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh, no, that's not right. This is one. Move layers to new component. Okay, so this is uh, becoming quite manageable, blah, 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 manageable with these, uh, basically these two different uh, components making up the main part of the, the thingamajig. So this is actually quite close to usable at this, at this point, I have to say. <clears throat> We're getting pretty close to where it's not necessarily very, but at least basically usable, which is nice. That is a good goal. One which I didn't even consider just a few weeks ago. So that's good. Let's just take out that uh, stunt face thing and we're going to Add some, um, okay, so let's just uh, do that. Uh, remove stunt phase component, component, like so. Then the next thing we we're gonna do, and that's a bit weird that it's the 
current actor scrolls away. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, we're not going to worry about that for now. What we want to do next is probably add the ability to specify these tokens, I think, because they're a bit not unusable, but, you know, we have to be able to specify them somehow. So I'm thinking that we should probably just support like web addresses for now. Um, maybe support like a proper image upload or something later. Um, but if you just, if you're able to just reference like a web image, that should be fine. Yeah. Uh, so we should probably make these a bit larger. Well, let's start by doing it this the right way. So inside of state, we need to add to the, oops, to the actor definition, which is not easy if we do it like that. Actor. Uh, interface actor. Aha. It has a name and a token URL. Yeah, sure. Token URL, token string, token source, token URL. That's probably fine. Just going to break some stuff. Uh, this is add actor. So this needs, hmm. What happens if you don't select a token? We should probably have some kind of default image. What we're going to do, yeah, we're, we're just going to require it for now, I think. Are we, though? Yeah. There we go. So if you add an actor, you need to add the token URL uh, to be able to add a token URL. Like so, token URL like so. That means that we probably need one more of these. So these three lines. They should probably be renamed. So let's call this input label, maybe. Field label. Add the actor form name token URL. Is there like a, oh, that's not the one. This is the one. Uh, URL thing? Yeah. Not really sure what that does, but let's try it. And we're not going to bind to name, we're going to bind to token URL instead, like so. Then we're going to head into strings. And we're going to have to add that here. So token URL, token URL. There we go. So that's going to store that and then, yeah, let's start there, I think. Save. Uh, add actor, token URL. Yeah, good. Showing up, everything. Very nice. Et cetera, et cetera. So in the combat arena, <laughs> It's all, no, 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 in the altitude layer, actually. So if we just do this, we should be in the right place. 
Uh, right now we're getting the image from this source. Now it should instead be, oh, let's see, let's change it inside of here. Actor.token URL. I think that's right. Yeah. And in addition to that, uh, layer token. Oh, isn't there like a ratio? Aspect ratio. One, I think. Height. Um, let's try and make this just 80, like twice as big. Layer token and thingamajig, min height of 40. Um, how do we add, where's the padding coming from? Oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> Not really sure. Let's come back to that. Ooh, okay. This is interesting. Um, yeah, this is probably going to need some layer line item center. Okay. So claims. Let's have a um, bit of a gap here. So if we inspect this, this is the image, this is the thing, that's the whole thing. Okay, so everything seems to be aligned correctly, it's just that the image is not being loaded correctly. That's fine though, that's that's uh, approximately, <laughs> approximately how we want it. So, add actor. Name, uh, zombie, Ooh. zombie, token URL, let's go with um, zombie, D and D, token, uh, that looks properly horrifying, can I just get the, yep, so let's just grab that at URL, Quite simply, um, go back here, paste that in, and um, let's adjust the flight modifier, bit higher initiative, and add the actor. Here we go, yeah, nice, that is quite cool. So that works as expected. Why does it expand a bit like that? Hmm, that's interesting. Becomes a bit larger. Does it have like a, well, maybe it actually should, we actually make this a hundred. That is quite a lot though. That does make them stable though. Which is nice. If we make this, uh, let's see, 50. That's not what I'm writing though, 50. And these like, uh, oh, 60 maybe. So that we got a bit of padding going on. Okay, these are not aligning correctly at all. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> that's not the right one. Ha <laughs> ha. This one, that's, this is the one I want to change. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so this still behaves a bit weird. weird. Hmm. Why? What? Well, what's this thing then? Why is setting it? Why is it setting a? Uh, what? Where is the min height going? Token container. And the HR thing is going inside a token container, isn't it? 
token container. Yeah, this is all the way out here. <clears throat> so that shouldn't make a difference. Uh, the token container, though, display flex, align items uh, in the center. There we go. Oh, that looks a lot better e immediately. Okay. Not really sure why it makes a difference whether or not there are tokens inside of it. It's a bit annoying that it's jumping like that. Hmm. Why is it doing that? Uh, let's inspect this. Yeah. Is it because of the token thing, maybe? Doesn't add any... Hmm... Yeah, maybe the whole collapsing thing is, is a bit obsolete at this point. Or rather, they should maybe not show at all if they're not like in use in combat at all. Yeah, we're actually going to, I'm actually just going to remove these, uh, this thing. Um... Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Why isn't it showing anything above eight? There they are. Are are they? Why are they not visible? Oh, right, right. Because those are I have this those in a different if. That was confusing. There we go. Yay! All the things are back. So I would do like this, I'm gonna move everything. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, but that means, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, add su oh, support for custom tokens. Should they be bigger, maybe? A bit more legible? Nah, that's probably fine. Let's leave out that. Okay. So. Yeah. This is actually quite nice. So I've been streaming for an hour, yeah. And I think I'm actually gonna give it a rest for now. Uh, the next thing I wish to implement is for the DM to somehow share this with his players um, so that the players can connect and in the first place at least watch the game board live as the DM changes stuff. That will be my my um, first wish. Actually, before we do that, just one more thing. Uh, can we make these animate like they did in the example that we looked at the other day? So now it's snapping all over the place, but I think we actually can make it just with a simple flip, um, like in here, because this does some, yeah, this does. Okay, so they just animate with a flip, don't they? Yeah. 
on the item itself, which is what we do. Uh, in here, I think. Yeah, with this. So yeah, if we just do like a, uh, there we go. <laughs> a comma for some reason. Uh, animate flip. Uh, we need to import flip, flip, like so. Let's see how that turns out. Yeah. Okay, so the only thing is that they, ooh, that's a very slow flip. Let's uh, speed that, that up a bit. Uh, like duration and let's just make like 150 milliseconds. I think that's a bit better. Yeah, that feels, feels a lot better. Uh, okay. So let's do that, add some this to the add animation when moving tokens. I would wish for this to be in order to, but that means that we need like in, let's see. That means within the layer itself. Okay, so let's let's have a look. Altitude layer. So within the layer itself, we need to. Yeah, we get we get the altitude layer. So within the layer itself, we actually need to keep track of which order everything should be in. So you're able to differentiate between the different I oh, okay. So whenever we consider, we get the items and we actually manipulate the layer itself. It's only when we finalize that we actually update it, right? So what we can do is what if we keep a list of which order they should be in. Does that make sense? Because they, 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 they're, they're all right here. But when we get over here, we lose that order. So what if when we consider, we keep track of the order? Does that make sense? I'm trying to figure out if it if it makes sense in my head. But if we if we do have the order, we keep track of the order of all the elements, how do we intercept that in any way? Let's just let's just experiment for a bit here. Hmm. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to finish this thought. So when in hand to consider we get the items as they are desired to be by the user, by where the user is, is dragging the items. But when we do handle finalize, we update all the actors with the proper altitudes because that's what we want to do. And by doing that, 
we reset the layer. Oh, sorry. We reset the layer, which in turn contains the actors, which we just updated. So we lose the order order that we had. So that means. Hmm. I, I, I think we're on to something with the order thing. So if we set that whenever we do handle, con uh, handle consider. So everything, every time we're considering something, we, we save the order, we update, and when we get back, we want to preserve the order. So I think we're going to have to create like a view. Is that right? Is that correct? So I, I think that we need like a, like a let, which is the, uh, the ID order, right? So that's just layer dot actors and a map of every actor where we get the ID. So that's what we start out with. Yes. Then we do this. We do ID order is now supposed to be E dot detail Well, it does probably recognize that we're actually changing the actors here. Let me think. So this could probably be a product of lay. This could probably just be like this, right? No, that's not what we want though. We don't want it to update automatically. No, ID order, basically this one all over again, just without this thing. And instead of layer dot actors, sure, let's just, let's just do layer dot actors. Yeah. So what we get in the end is a automatic thing, which is the actors which is basically just the ID order uh, which you map so you get an ID and then you do layer dot actors dot find where the actors ID is the same as the ID and that's the final list that you get which you then iterate over right here. And I think that's the right thing. Ugh. Hmm, will this create problems? Probably not, he said confidently. Um, did this save? I think so. So in theory, if I move this over here, ooh, it stays. And move it up. It breaks. <laughs> okay, so good start. Off to a good start. Let's see. Let's refresh this. Let's try that again. Okay, so we got this. We move it over here. That works fine. It does not work. Whoa, where'd it go? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where it went. Okay, In, uh, child to insert before is not a child of this node. Okay. Yeah, so it's probably hmm. Should this also just be actors then? Does that solve the problem? Let's see. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now the question becomes, what happens if I try to move it to a different layer? Okay. Ooh. It works. It actually works. Holy crap. Yeah. Great. Uh, fantastic. N um, nothing could be better, basically. Wow, holy cow. <laughs> actually, um, I realized that I don't actually need to do this here. I think I can just do it over here when, when we finalize. Yeah, I think so. So if I do this instead, change this for e.detail.items, I think we might get the same result. Whoa, in no way the same result. Um, yeah, let's, let, let's, let's leave it as it is because that works. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> this works. Does it? No, it's crashed. Okay, let's refresh this. Do this. Ooh, it's so cool. It actually moves as it should. Wow. Okay, that, that was actually easier to implement than I thought it would be. It took me a little while to get it working in my brain. That's mainly because my brain doesn't work too quickly, but we got there in the end, and that's the important part. I even think I can actually explain how it works, but let's not go into that at the moment. <laughs> let's not ruin the illusion. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. uh, fix layer order not being preserved when uh, yeah when dropping a token into a new layer or when rearranging tokens inside a single layer uh preserve the oh press pre serve the order of the tokens when dropping the token sure <laughs> feel a bit redundant how i wrote it but sure it works very cool very cool haha -ha. nice I didn't think I was actually going to bother with it, but now that it actually works, it's so much better. With these also moving around like they do, ooh, it's good. Feels good, man. I am a sucker for memes. Um, I'll ju just be straight with you at the uh, right out of the gate. Okay, uh, that's actually quite nice progress for uh, for tonight. So I spent another twenty minutes than uh, what I planned 20 minutes ago. But um, yeah, this is uh, this feels a lot better. Good, good, good. Okay, that's it for tonight. The next thing will most likely, like 90% certain, certainly be um, adding support for others to view this. So I'm probably going to do that via WebRTC not having looked at it at all before this point. So I'm sure it's going to work flawlessly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't take myself seriously when I'm saying that. But sure. Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm not, I've never worked with a WebRTC before, so I'll just have to see how how I, I uh, if I can get, get it working at all. Yeah. So thank you for... Um, Sticking around. Hope to see you next time. Snuckies.